Those crazy folks over at Procreate are at it again, unveiling a brand new animation app today. I've got an early preview build, so let's take a look. Hello, my name is Brad. I review tech for creative professionals. And when you boot up this app, it is very Procreate. It looks like Procreate. It feels like Procreate. It uses the same brushes as Procreate, but half the screen is dedicated to an animation timeline. Unless, of course, you don't want it to be. So when can you get your hands on it? Well, this releases on November 22nd, for the iPad. It's gonna cost $20 and this is not a subscription, it's just a one-time fee. You buy it, you own it. Now, before we get too deep into this, the folks over at Savage really wanted me to emphasize that what I have here is a preview build. Not everything that's going to be in the final app in a little over two months is available here, so I'm not gonna be showing off everything that's gonna be available to you. Some things are still a work in progress, some things are gonna change, so just keep that in mind. At the top of this, I called it an animation app, but in the two days that I've been using it, I would almost classify it more as a, as a motion graphics app. So what is the difference? When I look at this, specifically the timeline, this feels to me more like Adobe After Effects than it does Adobe Animate. Most of the iPad animation apps that I like are designed around the idea of frame by frame animation. You draw a picture, you go to the next frame, you redraw the picture, you do that over and over again until you have an animation. Now, many of those apps have symbols, they have motions, you can move things around and you could do that. But those are secondary features on top of that frame by frame animation app. This feels like it was designed the other way around. It feels like it was designed for you to illustrate something in pieces parts and then move those pieces parts around to create an animation. It's probably better to show this. So let's go to the demo. Quick plug while I get the demo set up, check out bradsartschool.com. If you're just getting started in digital art or just wanna brush up on your skills, my new courses can help you out there. There's some discount codes on the site now. Onto the demo. So here I have the app. This is what you see when you open it. It is a gallery. It looks identical to what you see in Procreate. Uh, you have all of the canvases that you're working with, all the animations that you're working with. If I hit the plus button, it brings up my option to create a new movie. It's got this new interface to it so you can decide, hey, I want a wide screen. I want the screen size. I want a square. I want a social media post size. So I'm gonna go ahead and create something that is just my basic iPad screen size here. And this looks like Procreate over here on the left hand size we have our brush sizes we have all of our brushes so if you're familiar with the brushes that come by default in procreate you're going to be able to come in here and use all of those brushes in here as well you saw i just drew and what happened down below is we have our timeline and i think the timeline is one of the more interesting things here at first it looks like a normal animation timeline you do something your timeline appears and you can scrub back and forth but you can also pinch and zoom and so this becomes really easy to move around and also navigate a lot of things all at once. You're gonna be playing with a lot of different layers, a lot of different tracks, and being able to zoom in and out and get into the minutia of that track is gonna be really helpful. The main reason why is because if we come to this track, I can tap anywhere on that track. Actually, I'll tap on this little editor icon and it gives me some options. For example, I can move things so I can move and scale. So I'm gonna set that to move and scale. That looks good. I'm gonna move it over here, tap it again, hit move, move and scale. And now I'll just make that bigger. So when I slide this back and I hit the play button, it's just moving my piece up. It's scaling it up like I told it to. So that's what I mean that it, this works more like After Effects than it's working like a frame by frame animation tool. Let's go back out to our gallery and let's take a look at some of the other illustrations that are already included with the app. So you can take a look and see what this thing could do. Let's take a look at Joyride. If I tap on the name of it right down here, it's going to bring up all my settings. I can see here this uh, little piece was made for Procreate by Goro Fujita. It's fantastic. Beautiful little piece, Goro. And here we have our properties, we can share it, we have preferences, that sort of thing. I'm not gonna dive too deep into that. The timeline is really complex. And as you see, you get in here, there's also groupings for this timeline. So let me go down here to Witch and Cat. If I tap on that little arrow, it's going to open that up. And you can see that the, the witch is on one track, the seagulls are another, the clouds in the skies are on the other. So I can even burrow down. And now you can see the witch consists of the head, and I think the head has parts, the head does have parts. The bangs, the hat, uh, all those different things are contained within a group. The sleeves are a group, the purse is a thing, the torso, the skirt, uh, the legs, the broomstick, the broom. Where this app really does well is when you have lots and lots of layers and all those move independently. If that sounds complicated, uh, it is probably going to be a little bit hard to get used to if you're nor used to normal animation apps. But if you're used to working in a Procreate file with a lot of different layers, it's probably gonna seem 
kind of familiar. All right, enough talking. I'm gonna hit play and you're gonna see what happens here. So as you can see, there's a lot going on and you can do some really sophisticated animations here. Those seagulls are on a loop. Uh, the characters on a loop. You've got things like the skirt and the broom changing a little bit here and there. Let me dive into some of those little pieces parts so you can see. So first of all, if I tap on the witch, it brings up this layer here, which actually has a little size icon on it. So if I tap on that, I can see how it has moved and scaled. So you can see it rotates negative three. The scale changes a little bit. It made it a little bit smaller. If I tap on the next one, there's my icon. Here we can say, it's only rotated like one degree and it's scaled a little bit. So by adding these keyframes to it, it's taking the overall group and it's moving the group in and out, scaling the group. So uh, here's an example. Let's go ahead and play with the rotation a little bit. If I hover my pencil over, it's giving me this little rotation icon so I can, I can rotate it more. In this case, I'm just gonna make her huge so you can see how I've changed the animation here. I'm gonna go ahead and hit play and now you can see that I'm moving that whole group in and out. Just kind of showing this thing, it's a lot to take in when you look at one of these animations because there's so many layers and there's so many things going on here. So we're gonna do something a little bit similar, uh, simpler. Here I am in Procreate. This is one of the illustrations I created for a project a few weeks ago. And what I've done on my layers is I've flattened these characters and the legs are their own layer, the body is the own layer, uh, the, the guy is on his own layer, the arm's on a layer, the back of her hair's on a layer, the head's on a layer, right? All of these things are on separate layers, and then I've saved this Procreate file uh, to my iPad. Now let's go over to Procreate Dreams, go back to my gallery. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new document. I'm gonna start with empty. I'm gonna hit this plus down here to bring something in. I'm gonna say import from files. And in my files I have, and in here I have that drawing that we were just talking about. It imports that for me. And down here on my timeline, it's just one big file. Now, if I go to drawing mode where I can draw here in this app, anything I want, the drawing mode is basically procreate, right? So um, when we're in that drawing mode, you can see I have a group and this has all of my layers in it. And I wanna break that down a little bit. So on my timeline, I am going to tap and hold and I'm gonna say convert layers to tracks. And now when I expand that group, let me zoom out a little bit. You can see her head is on one track. Her body's on another track, her legs are on another track. The dude with the tentacles is on his own track, right? Everything's on its own track. So I'm gonna zoom in so we can see this a little bit better there. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit my icon on my arm because we're gonna move this arm over. I'm just going to say move, move and scale. And I'm gonna rotate the hand and I'm just gonna move it over kind of like that. And then I'm gonna move over. Let me zoom out a little bit. Maybe make this two seconds. That sounds about right. Gonna tap on that again, click move, move and scale. Rotate that hand up, maybe move it so she's kind of getting close to touching the tentacle. And there we go, we've automatically done it. So if I go ahead and click play, you're gonna see that finger move up, you're gonna see that arm come out. Now it's moving kind of slow for me, uh, but that's no problem. I could actually tap on here and I'm actually gonna drag this back to like the one second mark. And now when I hit play, that hand's moving much better. So this is a separate file that I set up ahead of time and I'm just gonna go ahead and hit play because what I've done is I've gone in here and I've added these little animations and movements to the entire character so you can see what happens. The head moves a little bit, the body loses a little bit, that arm moves up. Just some subtle animation here where I'm moving all of these different parts to make the character feel more alive. I'm gonna tap on that again. Uh, inside move, you could do things like warp and distort, but there were some other options as well. For example, there's, there's some edit options. You could actually split your frames up. So on your timeline, if you did wanted to do frame by frame animation, that's probably how I would go about doing it. There might be a better way. There's also filter. This is kind of cool. So say you're doing something with depth perception where you've got a guy in the foreground and maybe like a background that you're not focusing on and, and you're having a conversation with another character and then you could bring the background into focus and add a blur to the character. You could totally do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and click Gaussian blur. I'm gonna really blur him out. And then I'm gonna go over here, tap on that again, filter, Gaussian blur, and I'm gonna turn him down. 
And when I hit play, he's going to slowly come into focus as the animation happens. So that, that's kind of cool that you can apply some of these features or some of these effects in a way that's non-destructive so they become part of the animation. This is an animation done by Nikolai Lockerson. This was also included here. I'm just going to go ahead and hit play. And what he's done here is he's imported a video in the background and he skewed it a little bit to be playing uh, there on that screen. And if we zoom in here, we can see some subtle things. You know, there's some uh, kind of cyberpunk looking steam coming out. You've got this like orb doing its thing. You've got signs flashing. You've got some steam in the foreground. So there's a lot of cool stuff you could do here. I don't have my sound turned on because it'll mess it up, but also down below, you're gonna see there's also an ambient sound playing on this. So yes, you can import video into this. You can import sound. So if you want to do a full blown movie, you can do that. Unlike Procreate, which does have some animation features in it and limits the size, the length of the video you can make, this doesn't really have any limits like that. So if you wanted to do, like if I wanted to do one of my little 10 minute animated how to draw YouTube videos, I could do that in this program. I can import sound, I can move things around, I can clip things. So I think I could do all of that in here. So that is the thousand foot view of what Procreate is working on. I think it's really interesting. I am super curious to see you know, what happens when this launches. Since this is animating in a different way than what I'm used to, it's going to take me some time to get used to it. So far, I've only been playing with this for a day or two. Um, I'm really curious to see where this evolves, where this thing goes, what all features they add to this over time. I think this could be a really powerful app. But what do you think? Let me know down below in the comments. Is this something you're excited about? Is this something you want to try out? Let me know. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you in a couple of days.